Hey everybody, Elgin Knight here again. Welcome back to the day stream. Um, so what were we doing? We were checking out more of War Tales. War Tales is an early access game that came out on December 1st. It's a turn-based combat strategy game, which we know the ones we like to hear play on the channel. Um, it has a lot more depth than I originally gave it credit for. I kind of picked it up as a random uh, title off of Steam. Uh, it has it's a low fantasy game. It has a lot of crafting and survival elements and resource management, which is pretty neat. Kind of reminds me of something closer to uh, a Kingdom Death Monster board game. If any of my viewers uh, are familiar with that title. Anyways, uh, we're going to get into it. We're going to start a brand new game again. I played a couple of games to get, uh, from the start to about, I don't know, 60% of this one area. I think the way the game works, and again, we haven't made it that far, is that once you complete the progress, there's a bar that we'll show you, uh, of the area, we move on to the next one. So uh, we're going to try and get this one done. Uh, we know where some things are. It's definitely challenging. Uh, all the loot's random, so sometimes you get some good stuff, sometimes you don't. Uh, the weapon skills for your team are something done simply similar to New World, where the, the item that you have equipped uh, will dictate your basic attack. Uh, so that is interesting how you can carve your team there. There's a lot of different classes. Um, proficient, uh, professions is another big thing in the game as well. But uh, we'll show it as we get into it. So uh, with enough ado, let's uh, put a mute on the that. We'll jump over into the game itself. Uh, here we are with War Tales. And uh, I'm just going to start a new game. So when you start a new game, you this is how you create your starting party. You've got uh, six... Uh, five choices to choose from. They're always these same five here. Um, and they if you see the bonuses on the side, it dictates the starting for uh, people that are going to make up your party. You can recruit more. Uh, so it tells you what classes they are. As well as some benefits to either uh, the various uh, resources in the game, which is influence, gold, experience. Uh, suspicion is how much crime you've done for how likely the guards are going to attack you kind of interesting well once we get a little bit more familiar with the game and feel like we're doing better we might do an evil run but there's a lot of guards running out there uh, not only do you get hurt you get injuries uh, injuries have to be healed by medicine so having medicine is a big thing um, I've found and what we're gonna go through here is the uh, group of friends because it's a uh, swordman archer ranger brute uh, is a nice balance and ranger is the dagger wielding guy they're not archers which is uh, something that's kind of interesting but we're gonna yeah we're gonna take them as our starting group we start off with 30 influence uh, which means we can recruit someone and we're going to hopefully for earlier on in the game uh, the mission uh, next up you kind of decide the general uh, a general perk for your team which these refer to as uh, troop bonuses uh, and we've got long walks which is actually traveling around and having to rest between distance and how you have to rest is a really big deal in this because every time you rest you need to feed your uh, party and food is a resource so that the longer you have to go between those two spots the less food you'll have resource you'll have to use to travel further distances and there are distances you have to travel experience gained by combat by 10 percent that's fairly interesting leveling up your team seems to be pretty important uh, the ability to unlock the other attacks that you get as your guys go from level 1, level 2, level 3. And there also is like a sub and main class thing going on, so fighters be can become one of three classes. Or same thing with the archers, so that's kind of uh, getting there would be quicker. People not dying is good. Critical damage would be nice. Uh, I think quick learners, because I think mean, crafting is a big thing, and we haven't really been able to dig deep into that yet. I'm torn between the critical damage, just because sometimes a critical hit can win the fight, and combat experience gained. I'm going to go with combat experience gained because we started off with less experience as the group of friends we are. These, this is a troop flaw that affects your overall group. Um, these will change depending on the first selection that you, cho you choose. Some of these are different depending on the, the first two selections, which is kind of neat. And I'm going to go with a very hard time getting up in the morning. This speaks as too much to me as a human being in real life, so that's why I'm going with that. I feel like it's what I, what I actually do. So, uh, the other ones, I, carrying weight would be a thing. Happiness, I haven't run into a problem with that yet, but I imagine it could be. We definitely don't want to reduce our crit hit chance. Uh, and willpower is your crit chance in this game, so I don't, I think I'm going to go with danger when I get up in the morning. 
So this is what I was talking about before. We only currently have the Tiller in, uh, independent state. I don't know if we get more with er, outside of early access. Again, I kind of bought this on the on the on the nose. Uh, we have normal, easy, hard. We're gonna go with normal. The game in itself is not easy, uh, or maybe it is once you get to figure yourself. But I think that until we master some of the mechanics and uh, combat, especially, can be brutal. Um, which I like to have like the combat difficulty and the simulation difficulty. So simulation difficulty is going to be like resources and stuff like that. And then this is going to be how hard combat is going to be. So I appreciate, and they know it's a hard game because they say like, this is a challenging game. Be sure to reduce the difficulty if it doesn't feel right. But they know it's like, it's meant to be very challenging from the off go. You, you, the other thing is like, you're... Don't get attached to your party members. They are designed to die and be like, oh, so go on, now grab a next guy. Um, they're kind of like, some of them wash out to an extent. There's a lot of people that you can recruit to add to your overall party. Yeah, so... Your companions are off in search of adventure. After a few days of quali uh, quietly traveling along, their only feat was not getting lost, and they have reached their destination. Here, surely await some novel and exciting quest that will stir up uneventful lives of the aboard apprentices. Adventure awaits at the end of the road for those who will make it there alive, that is. So, the other thing we'll point out right away, the reason why there's a pause thing is time is a thing. If you go off AFK or leave the thing away, you will waste your day and your guys will have to eat and uh, do stuff and you won't get anything accomplished. You really want to maximize how much things you get done in your day and this is when until this meal gets down low um so like if i were to go up here for example and like oh i meant to go back down here you're wasting maybe like an hour of travel that can uh i don't know it, it's a pain in the ass so you really want to take the time know where your resources are use the pause button to look at the map you also can't scroll the map so what you see on the screen is the only thing you get to screen at any given time you can't go look over and go, oh, there's something way over here, and then head towards it. you got to go discover that stuff as well. You can use this map, the world map, to figure things out, but that's it. All right, and you can see the icons. This is where, this is kind of neat. This is how resources show up. You can go highlight the icon changes when you highlight over them, and then combat guys. Now, you can avoid combat by literally running this group away from these guys until they chase you, and you get a skill called Run that lets you actually do that faster. But this is a fight that's meant to be there. We're fine, we'll just we'll head them straight off. Tells you the level of the fight and how many people make up the combat. It says fight and cancel. I've never had an option to cancel, so to like disengage, it's just fight. So I don't know what that button is there for. Um, and here is, again, it's just a, you're, you, if you've ever played a turn-based uh, RPG game, there's nothing new here. You have your starting formation. Each starting a combat map has some uh, placement spots that you can swap around your guys and adjust your starting combat formation. You see your turn order here. The turn order is not, it's when you go, any two guys on your team, and then when that individual guy goes. So I can use any two units for this unit goes, and then the other two units, and then the turn order. Goes. It's not uh, the name of each unit, like Allah had here. And you'll notice when you, if you play the game, uh, each character gets a, is unique, and I'll show that off in a second here if I can. No, maybe not. But they all have like their own. Yeah, so this guy here, they all get a unique trait as well that you don't have no control over. Uh, so this he's he's got extra constitution, and if we go through the each unit, they all have a, a unique trait that's something specific to them. Um, this guy's got tormentor. So this guy gets an extra damage when he's using a two-handed weapon. So we hopefully we'll get him one. This guy's got Brave, Strength and Dexterity, 5%. It's outnumbered at the beginning of battle. It's kind of interesting. Don't see that ever triggering strong. Increased Strength. Nice, nice. <laughs> Although he is a Dex class. So a lot of those things, again, they're completely random. Um, so a lot of those abilities weren't on things. Like, he's not a Strength guy. He's only Dexterity. Um, I'm not sure if we'll put a two-handed weapon on him. It's kind of weird. They don't label the weapon stuff as well as I would like. Um, the main thing you want to do is pay attention to is you can also do this. So I'm going to select Merrick here and I can hit number one. 
and I can see his movement range from this placement spot and then turn it off and then decide if I want to put him there and say, but now I want it, now I can do this type of thing. And that looks good enough to me for what we plan on doing here. Um, your armor gets damaged. The more you, the quicker you can kill someone with taking the least amount of damage of your unit is a big thing. These are your valor points. These let you use the special abilities. They show you the cost of your special abilities down here. Uh, later on, your classes, your light classes, which are going to be these two, will get a, an ability that when they kill someone in combat, they get a temporary one of these that can stack up. That is very huge, and that's kind of the, the more uh, essence or interesting part of the game is balancing that. Now, the reason why this guy has run, and I'm tempting to use this, but if you get next to this archer, he does, like, no damage. So if I do this, and now I can move next to this archer, he won't be able to fire his arrows now. Uh, so instead of doing a bunch of damage to um, my guy, he'll do, like, one or two, um, which is nice. And then we have to move any other one unit here. In this case, we're going to move probably the Brute, which is Alahad or Alehad. Um, these guys typically will attack the closest thing to them. So this guarantees that he'll go here. Let's get a swing in there. Then these guys will go. Oh, you have to hit end turn too, to, but there's no auto end turn. Move him here to attack. Now, the interesting thing you notice, it doesn't auto-lock the grid of the attack thing. I was able to go on kind of an edge here, which does adjust things for here. The two-handed weapons have a, a swinging arc, some of them, as you can see here, which will let you hit your guys, by the way. Friendly fire is a thing. Um, but another reason why they do that is because of how the archery works. So I've, that's my cone of firing. That's how far I can shoot an arrow. But if I also come up here. So the reason I, versus here, I don't, and you can't save to show this off, versus coming up here, is that when you go to shoot your arrow, it calculates the angled path that you're firing from, and then decides what the odd chances are that you might accidentally hit a, a different target than the one that you select. In this case, even from this angle. So if I was further down here, the chances of hitting him would be a lot higher. Uh, but from up here, I still have a chance of hitting my, my own teammate with an arrow. And this does happen a lot. It's annoying as fuck. Uh, hopefully we won't see it here. And we did. He just shot his teammate. Um, that only happens with archery. Um, so it always leaves starts a new turn off with the last character that you used. You just switch to somebody else to switch around. Once he's engaged, so you see here, you can't move. These two facing each other, I can't move anywhere in combat. But the thief, because this guy is not, is not engaged, so I can now, I can reposition him. So I'm going to come down here, or to the brute. Um, but unfortunately, by doing that now, I put his attack thing in a spot where I can hit my own teammate. I'm going to do something like this. And I managed to change the angle, so it would dodge hitting him. Here, I still can't, he's engaged. Hopefully, this would have been a kill shot if I don't hit my, yeah. He would have just died there if we had hit our teammate last round. But he did, so unfortunately now that's taken all of his armor off. Uh, and the only way you get that armor value back is by repairing your armor, which again, takes a resource. Um, once you've beaten up the army so much, you get uh, attack benefits. Now, combat experience is also not distributed evenly. Um, so you see I have three people with broken armor. No one took a serious injury, so I don't need to use this. Um, and I was able to loot 28 gold off of them. This is random. You'll get different things in here all the time. Sometimes it's gear. Sometimes it's just gold. Um, it's all over the place. So ideally, sometimes if you get lucky, you'll get more things than just basic gold. Um, 
you don't have to repair either. It just means that your guy will not have armor going into the next uh, combat. Now, I know because we're going to be going into this little stables and then to a village down here um, that we will not probably be getting into any other fights. So we're going to avoid doing that because you can, for a lot cheaper than the re those repair points cost, you can repair back at a town at a, a blacksmith for the gold. So uh, if you know you can save... Okay, what's going on here? I was on the edge. It wouldn't let me go around that. And you get stuff. Um, you get equipment that lets you actually, your, your team scale high cliffs and stuff like that, which is super neat. It's a lot. Um, normally, that'd just be flat terrain. It wouldn't be care. But yeah, if you get a rope and a pitten, you can actually rock climb up steep cliffs and stuff like that, um, which are part of the crafting part of this game. Um, so we're going to go into uh, the stables. Now here, something that's interesting for all the areas, and it's kind of uh, a bit of a complaint. What... And you'll see it happen in what that would be this quote unquote dungeons that I've seen so far. When you enter an area, your team does not do anything. You go to this flat screen where you just, it's a, like a two dimensional picture, and you can just enter and it highlights, you hold down alt, the things that you can interact with, uh, and that's it. So your guys is not actually walking around town or stuff like that. There's, and so the dungeons are the same way. You enter a dungeon, it's this screen, you see a couple guys, there's a talk thing, and then you go to the combat screen. I kind of hope for the dungeon you'd have a map similar to the world map that we're in right now and be able to see your guy walk around. But here we are. The dialogue is written a little flat too. I think that they could uh, benefit from putting some more emphasis to the writers and creating some more ambiance in the world. Um, when I think of how many people don't shoe their horses, it makes me want to pull the little hair I have left. Tell you what, buy a horse for me and I'll throw in a horseshoe for free. We see the green item here. This means it's interactable, but the little red X means that to take those items, you need to steal it. Now, professions is a big part in this game. Uh, stealing is lock picking, which comes in handle. So if I hit steal, this is what's interesting. I learn the profession, but the profession is like a badge that you can give to anyone, and as long as they're and that person, that character keeps track of how much experience they gain in that profession. So I can have him do one thing move the badge over to another guy and have him do another, but then they'd have, it wouldn't be stacking the experience to level it up in one guy. Also, each uh, profession comes with a stat, which is really interesting. A thievery comes with plus dex. As you'll see here, you get plus one dexterity when that guy learns to be a thief. So we're gonna put that on. Um, and then our ranger here, sorry, our <laughs> is going to become our tinkerer and the reason why is the critical hit and i might do that the other way around actually let's try that let's try that the other way around which is kind of all i have to do this is what i meant so i go back to here i click on the thief thing i make him a tinkerer which gives him crit and then i go to our ranger which is our dagger user and we'll give him thief which will give him the dexterity then it highlights the only thief character i have you could have multiple, by the way. I could put Thief over here as well, and then you'd have to select, but just kidding. And now you'll see that I can steal stuff. What it does not tell you <laughs> is what your chances are of stealing it successfully, whether you do or so whether or not you're going to get caught. You have no idea. Also, the little red item uh, text we see the plus 10, teal 20, is how much suspicion your group's going to gain, uh, which is bar up here where the guards are going to come attack you on site or look for you. So no matter, even if you steal it successfully, you still um, gain that suspicion. There's no getting off of it for free. Uh, I thought the war in Eldoran had, had been a boon for my business. I cannot help but feel poor, feel, <laughs> but feel for my poor horses. I can't tell you, <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you ain't soldiers. Take them with you if you can. Otherwise, they most likely end up dead on a battlefield through no fault of their own. So here's something that's interesting that I haven't seen. I can bring up, um, I don't know if I, so if I exit the area here, I'm gonna pause because again, you don't wanna waste any of this time if you can. And I go A, what's it, W? W is what they call their, your path of might or your like, basically your achievement experience. And there's four trees of these. They all come with uh, experience boons, which unlock, the different recipes and other traits that you learn. Um, so again, when you kill a champion for the first time, 
you gain that's one of them these are all things you can aim for right get known through it um so that experience comes a lot from doing this and ever this is when you uh learn new recipes or you discover areas of the map you fill this bar up and that led you but what i was trying to get at is there is no quest log and what i mean by that there's nothing when you pick up a job or get something like that you have to come to the map and when i highlight the map now i can see there's a little exclamation mark over the, the thing here says if the horseshoe fits and what that quest is is not exactly a quest think of it more of like an opportunity it gives me i have the opportunity to buy a horse and if i buy a horse they give me the shoe free the horse is expensive by the way it's 160 gold or something like that we have 78. um also you have to feed the horse like we and we already have one with us the horses are good for uh they follow you around they add to your companion count which is where we are here you can see we uh currently have five companions in our troop um and we can see all five of them here and we got pony um and we can edit pony's name because we all know that every horse is named roach that's just the and the companions approve i wonder if that like i didn't know that was going to be a thing um but again there's a this is where the happiness thing comes in i don't know exactly how that matrix works or when the uh ebb and flow of that's going to happen The old message on the text right here. Good R R I L people in my world. I'll let none of them watch my stream. The only a performance mode on here. Okay, so what I was saying, um, even it's a, it's an interest. So you don't have to do it. This is the these are the quests that tell you that you finished the area, and you'll find this little bar here. This is what I talk about the uh, the scenario experience. I think once you get 100 percent here, you've can need, completed the scenario on this map however you go about doing it. Um, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a second as we move our units towards the village. Being on roads is a thing, by the way. Notice the walking in the roads takes a lot less uh, fatigue than it does walking through like a bush of forest here, which is also very neat. We're gonna go through this plateau Loot some of those flowers. These guys here are traveling merchants. These people you're walking around. So there's one right here. These guys sell weapons, various goods, and stuff like that. Because you're not going to be able to get or loot everything that you want all the time. Um, so you sometimes do want to see what these guys have. I'm very cognizant of my fatigue bar at the top here. These guys are selling food right now. That doesn't mean anything to us. But down the road, very quickly, it will. And, of course, you can attack them. If this is where you're playing the evil play, uh, the, and I don't haven't done that yet, these, I feel like these guys would kick our butt. Um, and in, in 50 to 60 suspicion means that almost right away, all the guards are going to be fighting you all the time. Now, if you're down for that playthrough, um, so be it. Now, I just went through into the village here, and this is what I was talking about. So now in the village mode, time is still passing by while I'm sitting here. That's the other thing. So again, Hence the reason why I hit pause while I explain something here. So this is the name of the city, total population of the people, and what they produce, which is pottery, wool, and cloth. And there is, I haven't had a chance to really see it yet, but you can buy stuff like whatever their output is of production and then take it to another village and try and sell it. Um, but like, for example, the pottery, they say, is very fragile. So the, you get the idea that it could possibly break, you get into too much combat or go over some rough territory or whatever. Um, my complaint is, is that 
even though I can see the merchants on the screen, I'm not able to interact with them on this on this screen. I'm able to interact with the five buildings, and as I said, it's like a two, it's a flat screen. I can't, I'm not walking my team around. I just click on the icons to enter the spot. So I'm gonna take pause off, go enter into the blacksmith here. Again, we can pause here, and time is moving all the time. Uh, you can see the forge, the forge is highlighting green because it's usable. And as I click on the forge, it says, look, I've learned a new profession. It's a plus one strength profession. We're gonna give that to the, the brute here. There's our blacksmith. And it shows us some of the basic resources, the uh, recipes we can make. Um, these are all pretty good. This is an offhand dagger. We really should try and forge this for our uh, ranger. Uh, better shield would be good for our brute. Uh, again, leather, wood, iron ore. And this one here, all our armor is worse than this. So we, again, leather. But... When we talk to the blacksmith here, you can see that he only offers coal. I have not found a way to use coal to make iron yet. And the, the raw materials, which you use to repair your equipment. But again, I can repair for 12 gold versus it would have cost me 15 because I had three repairs, if you recall. So I'm saving three gold by doing this and I'll just repair there. So all my stuff is now repaired and I'll leave. And he also said he was looking for a blacksmith. Um, I apologize. I didn't take the time to read that. Uh, very deeply, but yeah, he said if I, he's looking for another blacksmith, we can find one and bring him one. The town hall, this is the mayor of the city, literally, literally Lady Marinus Gontrad. Uh, we talked to her. <clears throat> she says, are you mercenaries? I'll have you know that I don't take kindly to refugees in these parts. Um, why, you ask? Because they have overrun our streets and are now taking to the roads. Elderan is sending our way anything with legs and a mouth that cannot wield a sword. <laughs> you have your work cut out for you. There's no lack of honest folk in need of help to fend off the refugee menace. Um, pause. So this is why I talk about things that are a little flat. What you discover quite quickly in this game, which is not in this little scenario, is there's basically two factions, although they don't describe them as much. And there's no... I haven't seen how that would be uh, measured or impact the story otherwise. But you, you're either going to help the refugees... Or help the this little village. Um, it's and you're you're gonna. It seems to be you, you slide one way or with the other, um, from depending on where you take the blacksmith we're gonna find and some of the other quests that we get. But it doesn't. You don't feel any agency. There's no real music, sound, the lack of voice acting. Maybe the the, the text should have been a little bit deeper um, to really sell that you know feeling of. Uh, anger and strife or to try and evoke an emotional a better emotional response from the player to decide if they wanted to help the refugees or um the the simple village folk who are now being overrun by refugees that have turned to criminal activities which i think if they worded it that way would have sounded a little bit better um we're going to take another profession alchemy here it's a plus one dex thing um we'll confirm that so we have four proficiencies on four people. There are more for more than four proficiencies out there. Fishing, for example, is definitely is one of them we know for a fact, uh, which means to have even with the one uh, we need an extra person with us. Uh, and we are actually this time around thinking of going to recruit someone now. So here's medicine. This is very important, but snow irises are nowhere around here. Uh, we have to get them from in the in the snowy mountains. We probably will go there. Uh, and then we have some other stuff that we haven't used. I haven't created these. I haven't found, but the, I don't know if these are one-time use only, multiple-time use. Uh, we'll be able to throw bombs and stuff. But an interesting mechanic. We definitely will hopefully get down to try that out at some point in time. Um, we talked to her. She doesn't have anything for us. She basically can heal us. If we were wounded, she can heal our wounds. As you can see, she'll sell uh, some cures, some empty uh, vials, which you use to make more medicine things they're not cheap and then actual a strength oil and a sharpening oil i don't have anything to actually use but i also if you notice it has like a little brain symbol for the cost i haven't figured out where to get that resource yet um maybe we'll figure that out together so we're just going to leave here now um so the other two buildings now is the the, the inn which is going to be where we get our jobs and the market we go to the market again we hold alt down alt they could make this gray highlighting, which I don't know how you can, well you can see on screen, any other color than basically transparent gray, and that would have definitely helped a lot. 
Um, anyone here we can talk into. There is some inter some interaction with them. here. Please spare some food. If we give her one bread, we gain ten influence. One bread is equal to two food. Uh, we're gonna do it uh, because influences. We're gonna hope, we're gonna need use some influence to recruit somebody, but we're also gonna have to find food now to feed them. This guy here sells some basic um, regents. Now, what happens randomly? Can I pause here? Yeah, I should have been pausing while I'm talking here. See, because time's always ticking by. Um, these resources are somewhat random for different merchants. But like this had a green outline on it in my last playthrough, what I wasn't doing on stream, because for whatever reason, they were on sale. So I could buy them at a discounted price, which was kind of interesting. But here's the pottery I was talking about. It's called a trade good. But some between the handicraft art and pieces of pottery can be tricky items to travel with due to their propensity to break. Which makes me think that if we bought this trade good and tried to perform basically the same function we see the caravans doing, if we find another village, we could make money by selling that stuff. And money, and I don't know how important in the larger scope of the game it, it, that's going to be. And again, because it's early access, it may be an idea that's not fully realized yet, but yeah, there. Um, the leather is interesting for the five gold, but we'll come back and do that in a second again. We could always try and steal everything, but if you notice, the leather would be almost immediately hunted down by the cards. And we have no idea if we're going to be successful. There's no, like, percentage chance to say, hey, you know, you have a good chance of stealing this. You don't or not. And I don't, that's kind of interesting to me. You also can inspect everybody, um, see what stuff they have and level they are. I don't know why, but you can't interact with it, but maybe just to gauge if you want to get into a fight ahead of time. Various merchants here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be buying two things of salt. Because I know down the road, this is coming back from the playthrough I, I, I've done offline, that we are going to want to use that for some recipes. This guy just has so it was vegetables. Here's your meat. Um, we're going to leave that down. What we would love to have seen is flour. Um, so we can make bread down the road. But she, unfortunately, only sells salt. That's where those traveling merchants come into play, though. Uh, we're going to talk to Renart here. We know what happens here. He says, ask for a few crowns, which is the money in the game, so he can polish his armor. We say yes. We give him 10 gold, and he steals it. He steals another 20 off of us and disappears, um, which is okay. Uh, I, I wasn't sure, but, but now if I hit escape and pause, because again, we're, you'll see that over here is a new guy that wasn't roaming around the map before. And if I go on off of pause, we can see that that is Renard. So we're going to go chase him down. Again. There we go. And there's Renard. I can polish your armor for it. Then he realizes it's us. We threaten him to get our 20 gold back. We get our 20 gold back. But we're also going to attack him. He's a criminal. Um, there is no... Uh, suspicion meter. There's no downside from doing this. I can find it all. So we go to fight. And it's combat experience. Again, because we're also... You're, you're trying to shave every little point of uh, value we, we can get off of here. Excuse me. And the, the, the combat area maps are cool, like the war areas. I don't know how well terrain is going to come into play in some of the bigger fights, but they have things like items that you can use as extra damage, uh, traps to avoid for... Uh, ground damage, so it's kind of neat in that respect. So we're going to start off the fight. This guy's fairly weak anyways, but we're going to hit him with the arrow, which almost kills him because of the critical hit. And we get one extra turn, which we're going to not do him. We're going to take the ranger, or AKA Earth. Put him around here, and attack. And there we go. So we gained 32 gold, so we actually netted a netted profit gold there, and we made 8 influence in 23. So it was a net gain from doing that quest, and we'll head back into the village now.
we're back in the village. We're going to go into the tavern here. Uh, tavern. Purple people are quests, basically, or uh, interactable in a way that are somewhat different than green. Uh, so far, they've been mostly quest people. I'm not quite sure the overall difference of it, but still. Um, or they have something to do with this progress meter. We can talk to everybody. We can see this guy. Is, uh, the innkeeper will let us rest for... You're allowed to sleep at an inn without having to use your food resources. So that is very powerful. Um, but you're not always going to be at uh, an inn. So when you have the opportunity to do this, you can see how low we are on fatigue. Um, I recommend that you do it for the 15 gold that it costs you. is going to be way cheaper than trying to buy um, food until you can start getting some. The brandy is kind of interesting. I'm, if we had the other components, we mod might buy that to try and make the bomb from the ap apothecary. But we're going to rest here. It's going to cost us 15 gold down to 69. Leave. But now our companions are fully rested. We've gained all our valor points back. So we're up four or five. And here is the recruitment. So everyone here, we, we inspect... We talk to you, they're going to say, hey, we'll come with you. Uh, and then, yeah, this is how you add people to your party. So this guy is a ranger. You don't need a ranger. This person is a swordsman. And they have a two-handed sword. Where our swordman is currently. Uh, so we could get one of those. And sorry, that's your swordsman. And we have a brute. What I would like to have seen is a spearman. Um, so I'm tempted possibly not to recruit one of these three. I know there's another recruitment spot in the prison that we could possibly go to. We'll think about that. Uh, this is the informant. And then we talked to him. He says, you know, hey, I've got jobs that you can do that are different than the job board but they involve kind of getting involved in people's business. I mean, I think this is more like if you run it like a a la Thieves Guild type thing. So we can see that these missions actually cost influence to buy. Um, see, refugee is looking for mercenaries who can help fight as well as negotiate. The captain of the guard is looking for mercenaries to help them bring criminal to justice. Someone needs to help in the abandoned tower. At least that's what they're screaming out the window. And the wife of a man condemned to the gallows is desperately seeking help. I think we're going to take Captain of the Guard, which is going to take enough influencer that we're not going to be able to recruit this guy, although we know, we know we weren't going to do that. But I do want to buy that mission. And there it is now highlighted on the map over here. And we were going there anyways, but I, believe, I want to see if that um, gains us any benefit. And then we're going to talk to the job board person in review these are random so you're not like and the reason why i know that is i've seen too easy on the board versus these all these average in this one that's hard and currently we can take up to three jobs at a time uh and it also shows us the direction the general direction so we're going to take we must end now our merchants so we will take the the Desperate Refugees quest. We're going to take the Old Lighthouse quest. And maybe for kicks and giggles, we'll try... Mathasis Lund here. He's wanted for a string of murders. He's a very dangerous individual, so we'll take this. We have an easy, medium, and hard. So all three are all under lockup. So now we've completed basically everything we could do here other than, like I said, um, hiring uh, another another mercenary to come join us. And again, I was hoping for a spearman. I didn't see one, so we're going to hold off. I think we'll be okay. So we're going to exit here now. Now I want to go back to the blacksmith. I'm going to go to the forge. And it would cost me three leather 
which I think would be about 15 gold to make one piece of rag armor. And once we craft it, we reveal a, a brand new recipe as well. So we could buy three leather to make that. And then at the apothecary clinic, if we bought four things of brandy and one vial, we'd be able to make this incendiary off. Okay, so that's what we're gonna try and do here. We're gonna we're gonna go to the market, talk to this guy. Buy three of those. Leave, we'll go back to the inn. Talk to the we need five brandy. Leave there, go back to the apothecary clinic, speak to her. We need a vial from her. And now we can make the incinerary flask. So that gave us into our compendium now. We have a, a, a point to spend and we can learn any one of these ingredients. We just learned, uh, I th think it's hand bombing. Just don't know what that is going to be, but still. Here we can learn a new weapon. Here we can learn a general item like saddlebags. We're not quite there yet. but it does teach us something new. And then over here is the general troop benefits. And this is these are really important, I think, to begin with. Uh, and what we're gonna take the first one is here, which is endurance training. Our 5% movement speed increased while walking around the world. Very important. And then we're gonna take this one next. That way, our, when we're traveling around for the rest of the time that we're moving, um, we're gaining 10 to 15% distance for our food. Back to our forge now. As you see, we can now craft some armor, so we're going to forge that up. This is kind of neat. Some of them stayed lit up, some of them don't. There's some remnants here. I got a slot. Sometimes I've made this before. I, my armor did not get a slotted item, so I don't know how you uh, gauge that. But this is light armor, a oh, bit basic armor. So we're going to go with our ranger. So this is armor plus five. This is armor plus 11. So we're going to, there we go. Now what we get to do is that. And now for, she has an extra attack that she can use for, which is throwing this bomb around, which is kind of neat. And then we're going to talk to here and we're going to sell There we go. Get some of that money back. We accidentally oversold on a brandy, but on the bright side, we can use it as food, and we're going to need that. We bought one extra brandy. So, we've built a weapon, we have some armor, and now we're going to depart. Now, if I pause and look at our map, it'll show us where our current quests are. These are our jobs, right? Purple means that it's going, it's a, it's overall, it helps, it's to progress the overall storyline. I also feel like we may not, I'm, if we don't get anything extra for this, those, that 50 influence may have just been used to purchase, to see where the item, the event is, not create the uh, event. And we may, next time, may want to save our influence uh, for other things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head to this windmill over here see it on the edge of my screen it's just starting to high, highlight up now staying on the road a minor effect on our fatigue and we're gonna go in here so this is kind of an interesting 
little area when we hit alt we can see we can interact with two things here when we select the wood pile we see we, we're stealing but when we select the box there's no red we, we can actually take the key with no consequences we speak to Eins here he says i'm terribly sorry mer mercenaries there's nothing of interest for you here this is but a simple sawmill and i am its humble owner but then we you find out we can use the ornate key on this trap door we go down and then talk to the refugees here. Don't hurt me if they flog me one more time. And then you realize that she's been keeping refugees as slaves uh, and mistreating them for labor to get to run her humble salon mill. And we also find that there's a book here that gives us plus one knowledge, which is really cool. So we're going to take that and use it. Yes. And now we can take, we had a free point in here. Uh, run is a good one to avoid conflicts, but we don't. I know what we're looking to fight in the next little bit, so I'm not going to take that one because we're still close to a point from doing other stuff. We're going to take movement speed on the roads increased by 10%. Now we're really uh, going to be able to make some distance uh, in between our rest periods, which is really important. She is now run off because she figured out what we did, and we now have two spots where we can now get some free wood resource. And that actually is pretty important. So we're going to leave. We're also going to hit save here. I'm going to call our game Twitch Live. You only get one save spot. You can, and there's no going back. So like this is my hard spot coded in time. But, so I can always come back to here and there's an auto save that starts around whenever you enter a certain area. But that's it. There's no multiple saves. So the second I overwrite that save, because it won't give me the option to rename it again, that's my new like set point in time. So it's very much, uh, very hard for you to go back and redo things other than just in the moment. Um, and I also say that because that event triggered this here. So Ein's had, the reason why she's gone and she ran off, got the guards, and has now come back to uh, fight us for re releasing her slaves. Now we can pay five influence and just completely avoid the fight but we're not we're not avoiding a fight she's a slaver and if you watch me play path of the righteous you know i hate slavery so let's get in there we have two hoodlums and a poacher and they're all level one we're gonna fight and there's not even like fight music i feel like there should be some more dramatic switch over there um, all right, so we have one archer, two guys who are going to poison, three guys who are going to poison. So just like before, the real challenge is getting, ideally, a way to shut this archer off. So he can't start going crazy with DPS from a distance. But I don't think there's many ways that we can do that unless we take advantage of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run to the spear. This highlights a free attack with the spear for us. So we're gonna take that free attack with the spear and throw it at a hoodlum. There he is, right? But that wasn't our movement. So we still have a movement phase, which is pretty neat. So we're gonna move here. And now we can engage the archer and he's not going to be able to use his arrows. And if we wanted to, we could throw this flask at someone, but I don't think we do. Move my archer up to here. They're probably going to go after the ranger because he's the closest. We already got, got a guy who's hurt and low armor, so let's just keep taking advantage of that. Get a shot in. Yeah, he's going to go after the ranger because it's the closest target. And that might have been, as I said, we might get punished for that. I'm going to move this guy in here try and control them so they attack uh, Ahad, our brute, the guy with the shield. And they did. Get the 
Archer could only did three versus the probably the ten or so he would have been able to do. We're gonna move him over there. We should have avoided walking over the trap that we could literally pick the path. We just lazied it. That was a mistake. Slug hit him with that big two-handed hammer. We're spreading out the damage right now. Not the worst. We're going to hope he doesn't hit any of our team here. And by the grace of God, he didn't. Now, we'll just get this guy here and swing on the hoodlum. Sadly, not enough to get a killing blow. Ranger is in a bit of a rough way here. Actually, the Ranger is about to die. So, we're going to restart. The other thing is they also give you the restart battle option, which is nice. We're going to say yes. Yeah, moving the Ranger there was a mistake, because he got... Uh, I only have one way to heal someone in combat, and it's a Valor Point ability that can only be used on somebody else, and it's the Ranger. That's right, he's also our healer. So we're going to switch some spots around here. We're going to do this, but what we're going to do, instead of moving, taking the archer turn, is we're going to move him to here. Fire the spear off. Then move him here. Getting in an attack. Now, when we go to our ranger, we can decide if we move him here. Let's throw our acid bomb. I haven't used it. We haven't used it yet. I don't hate that because if it stays burning, I don't. That, that's not the worst. This is Ein, this is the captain, so they just do a bunch more damage. That wasn't the worst. I'm going to use the archer to keep doing damage to this character. Don't start taking any burn damage. That's my, my major concern right now. is that your health, the red bar, comes back to full at the end of the fight. Alright. That's one down. I'm going to move him up here. Hopefully he has less chance of hitting our main guy. Get some damage. I'm not dying. Okay, 
so he's dying now, and he's dead. And once he's dead, there's no resurrection scroll. That's it. He's gone. Kaputs. Uh, thanks for coming out. So we're going to have to restart again. Archer does goes last. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try something a little different this time. Walking through the bear trap was a mistake again. But I'm trying to focus down some damage here. Oh, she's a spin attacker. That was a mistake. That's what the inspect is for, by the way. You can see what their basic attacks are. Hoping we can get the ranger moved up to turn. 